Hello, it's Jess. Welcome to another installment of Your Blues News. I'm Tyree. And I'm Roman. Let's get started with your news. Five San Oswego students active in academics, leadership, community service, campus involvement, arts, and career and achievement will receive the 2015 SUNY Chancellor's Award for Student Excellence as the highest student recognition through the statewide university system. This year's Oswego honorees for its sound achievements inside and outside the classroom are Dino DeMarco, a five-year accounting MBA major, Joshua Drake, a biology major, Molly Matat, a meteorology major, David Owens, a studio art major, and Eve Yegen, dual major in finance and applied mathematical economics. The third annual Oswego Polar Plunge benefiting the Special Olympics is scheduled for March 28th with about 300 expected participants. The event is organized to support local Special Olympics athletes. Registrations for teams are now open and applications can be completed at www.polarplungeny.org. The event is scheduled to start at 1 p.m. In, in, at Rice Landing in Oswego. Now time for the latest sports news for, from Syracuse. The Syracuse women's basketball team has been awarded the 8th seed in the Greensboro region for the upcoming NCAA basketball tournament with a first round game against 9th seed Nebraska slated for Friday night. The Orange are one of four teams assigned in the pod Columbia, South, uh, South Carolina for first and second round games this weekend. MS Lacrosse, SC remained on the field last Saturday by winning against John Hackens 30-10. With their win last weekend, the men's teams moved 6-0. Now over to Kyle reporting about the upcoming Leary Magazine that the OHS Packer is currently working on. Basically we are looking to capture and display all of the creative aspects of students at our school. We will be showing photos, art, written work such as short stories and poems and we're going to look for a way to incorporate graphics and jewelry making and sculptures if it's possible as well. I was just sitting in Mr. Shaw's room in third period working on yearbook stuff you know nice easy normal day and then suddenly goes hey Rachel you and Jael are going to do this and I thought he was joking at first, and Jael and I joked around that I would have like an aneurysm or something if I took this on, and yet here I am, really excited about it. We make it on a computer, and then we will print about 100 copies and distribute them to the students around the same time as the yearbook. No, it's just me and Jael. We don't have a concrete deadline, but we're hoping to be done by May at the latest. We really could use more written submissions. We have a lot of art, a lot of photos, um, but we just were really lacking on the writing. So we're trying to do everything we can to generate interest in it to get more pieces. Just email it to me at rpertel at oswego.org or if it's something that you can't email like a sculpture, you can take a picture of it and email it to me or set up a time for me or Jael to come photograph it ourselves. Oswego Fire Department crews were dispatched to a structure fire just after midnight at 110 West Bridge Street near West 8th Street. First arriving crews reported smoke showing from the two and a half story multi-family dwelling with a duty off with an off-duty officer reporting an active fire seconds later. Firefighters found a heavy volume of fire on the first and second floors of the structure and went to work extinguishing the flames and searching for occupants. The fire extended to void spaces in the attic, making overhaul physically demanding on the firefighters. The fire was declared under control after about an hour as firefighters continued to pull wall and ceiling material exposing hot spots. According to Assistant Fire Chief John Shago, the multifamily residence appeared to be occupied by college students, but nobody was home at the time of the fire, Shago said. Our personnel did an excellent job knocking down the fire and protecting the neighboring structures. The house did sustain moderate damage, but it is not considered a total loss and should be able to be repaired. A neighboring house sustained minor damage to the vinyl siding. One neighboring patient was transported to the Oswego Hospital for observation and no other injuries were reported. 
The Oswego Fire Department was assisted at the scene by the Oswego County Fire Coordinator's Office, Oswego Police Department, Mentor Ambulance, National Grid, and the Oswego County Mobile Cascade Unit. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Now over to Jesse Liu reporting on the interesting exhibits displayed in the Ithaca Museum. Place well known for its natural beauty. We're talking gorges, waterfalls, vineyards, you name it, we've got it. But sometimes in the depths of winter, we're looking for something beautiful that's a little bit more indoors. Today I'll be taking you to one of Ithaca's best kept secrets, the Herbert F. Johnson Museum of Art up on the hill at Cornell. It manages to combine beautiful views with globally renowned art. Let's go check it out. One of the most distinctive aspects of the museum is the building itself. It's a concrete behemoth with huge sheet glass windows that overlook some of the greatest views in the city. The unique building was opened in 1973, although a new wing was revealed in 2008. The museum features numerous permanent collections, like its Asian art exhibition, Visible Storage Gallery. When I last visited, I was able to see two of the temporary exhibitions. The first, a collection of photos from Margaret Burke White, the first female photographer for Life magazine, who also is a Cornell alumnus. And the second exhibition, called Cast and Present, filled with plaster casts, which were actually initially used as models for art students. Chairs are set up to encourage visitors to draw. The museum is great for lazy Sundays or Thursday nights, for just wandering and seeing what you find, or for those in pursuit of a specific piece. My personal favorite exhibit is visible only after sunset, the Cosmos exhibit consists of thousands of LED lights, which light up in patterns akin to dancing stars. It's absolutely mesmerizing. It often surprises me how many Ithaca residents haven't actually been to the Johnson Museum of Art. I, for one, can't wait to go back soon. I'd like to get a special thanks to the Ithaca High School's TV program. Uh, those segments that were, done, were handed in were, uh, did an excellent job. And finally, let's go over to Whitney and Riley with the latest news about Lighthouse Lanes. Lighthouse Lanes was constructed in 2003 to provide Oswego with a new home for bowling. The project was spearheaded by Bob Hofer and Nick Serino, and after some searching, found the perfect home on Champaign Drive just off Route 104. With the help of veteran manager Dana Hollister, Lighthouse Lanes has become one of the premier bowling locations in the central New York area. We recently caught up with Kristen Hofer to talk about the Oswego Bowling Alley. 
Uh, Lighthouse Lanes is my family business. My dad is the co-owner and we have been open for 12 years. Uh, we are a 24 lane bowling center with synthetic lanes and then synthetic approaches. Uh, like I said, we are one of the newest bowling centers in the Northeast, therefore we support technology such as being able to set up your own spares. Um, we have about 20 employees and a lot of family members that work here. Uh, we have a full service kitchen which allows us to do a lot of different kinds of parties and things like that. We have a lot of bowling leagues. We have bowling leagues seven days a week here at the bowling center from September until April, and then in the summer, four days a week. Uh, we have all different leagues, kids, adults, mixed, um, adult, child, everything. Uh, they're a lot of fun. The Most leagues are 32 weeks out of the year. We have some that only bowl nine times a year and some that bowl somewhere in between. Um, and then we have open bowling every day as well. Our biggest open bowling days are Saturdays and Sundays as well as Monday nights because we do dollar games and dollar shoe rental. We do a lot of different kinds of parties. We do everything from bowling birthday parties to hosting retirement parties, showers, and a lot of fundraisers. Uh, we do bowling fundraisers as well as chicken barbecues and uh, other kinds of dinners like spaghetti dinners and things like that. I'm Whitney Dano and I'm Riley Tinkler from WVUC News Lighthouse Lane.